Hello, everyone. Hello, get together. Today we will have uh, Facebook Live. I'm always saying that it's important Facebook Live, but we always have those important things to talk about. And today we are going to talk about the Fulbright Tea Exchange Program. This is the program for uh, that will bring international secondary level teacher uh, to the United States for a six-week program to take academic seminar for professional development at a host university. But more details, we are gonna discuss with Diana Kretsu, who is the English language coordinator at the US Embassy. So I'm not gonna take more of your time, Diana. Uh, feel free to uh, start sharing your presentation. And um, for those who are watching us today, feel free to leave your questions in the comment section below. And um, if you were late, we will just read them later and we will respond to them in like written form. But yeah, feel free to leave your questions in the comments. Diana, the floor is yours. Thank you, um, Alexander. So hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me on yet another wonderful Facebook live session. Um, I cannot wait to tell you, everybody, about the Fulbright Tea program, an exciting opportunity for English teachers. Um, so please, I encourage you to leave all of your questions down below so we can chat and so I can answer whatever questions you might have. All right. Um, so <clears throat> let's talk about the wonderful Fulbright Teaching Excellence and Achievement Program, also known as uh, Fulbright T. So this wonderful program for teachers is sponsored by the U.S. Department of State with funding provided by the U.S. government, and it's administered by an organization called IREX. So the Fulbright T program entails basically what Alexander mentioned at the beginning. It brings international secondary level teachers to the U.S. for a six-week program. Teachers will take academic seminars for professional development. Uh, they will observe classrooms and share their expertise with teachers and students at the host university and at local schools in the US as well. So for the Fulbright T, we typically have two cohorts, so to speak, or we can call them groups. So the first one is the general pedagogy cohort. The second one is the media literacy cohort. So for Moldova, we only have the general pedagogy cohort. So if you're a Moldova national, this is the one that you will be included in if you're selected. So for the general pedagogy cohort, um, this also entails that uh, it brings international secondary school teachers uh, to the US for a six week non-degree, non-credit academic program at a univers US university. So <clears throat> the teachers that can, let's say, be eligible for this cohort must be teaching one of the following disciplines. So English or English as a foreign language, social studies, that being civics, history, geography, global studies, etc. Uh, math, science, special education in the disciplines listed above. So you don't have to be an English teacher. You just have to be a teacher who speaks English really well, basically. <clears throat> we typically have two candidates every year who go on this amazing program to the U.S. And our two most recent success stories are Christina's, who went to the Appalachian University, and Yodokia, who uh, was hosted by university in Montana. So we asked them to tell us about their experience a bit, and Christina said that she had an amazing experience in the U.S., both at the university where she was placed and in Washington, D.C., um, <clears throat> they managed to have sessions with some of the best professionals in the field. They visited local schools, learned a lot about the educational system in the U.S. Yodokia as well had an amazing experience. Uh, and while you're on the program, we stay in touch with you at all times. So I know that the experience is amazing firsthand. Um, she managed to attend plenty of courses to improve her professional skills, um, her teaching strategies and language competence. But of course, the program exceeded her expectations and she found it to be amazing. All right, so let's say what 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 do you have to do 
uh, to be eligible. So the selection criteria is pretty straightforward. You have to be a current secondary level, middle or high and or high school. So if you're a primary school teacher, unfortunately you don't qualify for this particular program. So you have to be a current secondary level full-time teacher of English, English as a foreign language, math, science, foreign, um, other foreign languages or social studies, including special education teachers in these subjects. You <clears throat> have to have a bachelor's degree or equivalent. You need to have minimum of three years of full-time teaching experience by the start of the program. But of course, preference is given to those who have completed at least five years of full-time teaching. So the more experience you have, the higher your chances are on the program, to be selected on the program. You have to be proficient in English, and this will be tested. You have to be a citizen and resident of Republic of Moldova. And when you apply, for the program, there will be some other requirements indicated in the application, which you need to uh, fulfill. <clears throat> right, so how do you exactly apply? Um, you can take a screenshot of this page. It's just going to be easier for you to go through the steps. Um, or you can scan the QR code here on the screen. Basically, you follow the first link where you will find a lot of useful information. I will open the link in a second and show you um, basically what you can find there. <clears throat> you will have information on the program and you will have some attached documents to it. So I strongly suggest that you look through all of that information. And then the third step is to create an account and apply via the link, uh, the last link. You have to go to fulbright.irex.org slash account slash login. You create an account and you start your application. So in order to be eligible, you have to submit your application. You can save it at any time if you want to stop, but please don't forget to submit the application. So <clears throat> right now uh, we have active recruitment for this program. So you can apply until March 31st, okay, not later than that. So please, the sooner you apply, the better it is. The Fulbright Teaching Excellence and Achievement Program provides a lot of support before you leave and while you are on the program. One of the types of support that you get is obviously <clears throat> the J-1 visa that enables you to enter the United States on this exchange program. You also have <clears throat> a covered round trip fare with the airplane. You have covered accommodations, meals, and incidentals for the whole duration of the program. You also have accident and sickness medical coverage. You have a wonderful workshop in Washington, D.C. And of course, the main attraction of this program is the professional development and cultural activities. So, <clears throat> Before we go forward, I wanted to show you what you can find um, on our website, basically, where um, the first link leads. Just one second. I want to walk you through some of the um, steps, basically, and to show you what <clears throat> and how those documents can um uh, how they can help you. So it's important to remember that the application takes place online. Um, you can find the post for Fulbright Tea on our Facebook or on our website. So I'm going to show you that. All right. <clears throat> and while and while Diana is uh, sharing the screen, don't forget to leave your questions in the comment section. And even if I wouldn't pronounce them right away, if, uh, we will just get back to them a little bit later. So don't worry about that. So don't forget to leave your questions. OK, Diana, mm, yeah. I'm adding the present your screen right now. All okay. right. Thank you. <clears throat> so this is our website, the um, US Embassy's website in Moldova where you can find the article announcing the call for applications for Fulbright T. You have a very extensive description of the program, some of the things I already covered in the presentation. 
If you want some more information on the program, strongly suggest that you visit this link. Um, this is the official um, description of the program from the organization that manages it, IREX. So maybe you will find some more information in there that is useful for you. Another thing that you should check out is this document here called Program Information, Program Announcement, and when you're ready to apply, and I hope that this uh, little session will help you to do that, <clears throat> you go to this link over here. If you have any questions or you're not sure about the application process online, there's this wonderful online application guide for applicant that you can um, read through and it walks you through the uh, portal where you apply for the program. All right. Um, we can tell you many amazing things about the program, obviously. I can probably do that all day and all night, but I guess it's better if um, somebody who's been on the program gets to tell you more about their experience, um, how the program changed their life, if it was useful, of course it was, spoiler alert. Um, are we ready to introduce our guest speaker? Yes, so uh, I will add to our uh, Facebook Live, uh, Elena Zigo. Elena, hello. Hello. Okay, we can hear you good. Uh, Diana, uh, it's up to you. You know Elena better. So uh, let's talk about your experience, Elena. Uh, please introduce yourself in the beginning. Um, well, hello, dear audience. Hello, Diana. Hello, Alexandro. Um, I am a teacher of English from Belt. And I'm, teach I'm currently teaching at the Mihai Eminescu High School here. And I have participated in this wonderful program in 2018. And I have also, um, and if you have noticed, I am there on the picture. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> um, so um, I've been um, um, interested in programs uh, uh, for teachers, but unfortunately, um, there weren't that many, you know, for teachers to go abroad. And of course, we have a lot of opportunities here um, in Moldova, a lot of workshops, a lot of seminars that are organized. But of course, the hands-on experience that you receive there is not compared with anything else in the world, um, especially for a teacher of a language, I would say. Um, so um, I have, um, I applied for um, it and um, I um, went to uh, North Carolina to the Appalachian State University and um, uh, if speaking about my application program, it was, um, um, I um, really, you know, as we all Moldovans, I think it's uh, some uh, preconception of ours, I don't know how to say it, it's like uh, I wouldn't, uh, you know, succeed. Uh, I will, you know, I'm doing it just uh, for uh, a piece of my mind, you know, in the end that I tried and uh, uh, somehow uh, it wasn't uh, meant to be. But um, it turned out that it was meant to be for me. Uh, and when I received the call that you're invited for the interview, um, I was thrilled. I was um, uh, very surprised and happy. And um, it went well, well on the interview. I was interviewed by a um, uh, staff member of the U.S. Embassy and um, some other people that are responsible of the program. I was given some questions of my expectations on the program. And, you know, everybody is very uh, anxious before an interview because you don't know what uh, questions might be asked and how to answer correctly uh, because... Uh, um, honestly, there is no, you know, correct answer. All, all the answers should come from your heart and should be answers that you really believe in. And um, I was really interested in uh, qualifying for the program in, um, you know, making uh, uh, my career, uh, you know, um, a successful one and uh, bringing home something that my students will, uh, you know, be able to benefit from. That was my main goal. And um, well, I succeeded and um, we arrived, um, our departure date was the 11th of September. Uh, we were kind of anxious about the date too, uh, but um, 
we arrived safely and safely and everything was um, super great we spent a whole week in the um, capital of the country in washington dc we had uh, nice trainings with people who introduced us uh, in the culture of uh, the united states uh, um, we had a lot of discussions we mingled with a lot of people from different places from different countries there were a lot of teachers from all parts of the world and um, uh, of course we had the a, um, an excursion through the city uh, we went to the sites uh, you know uh, even uh, these days uh, when i speak uh, to my students about touristic sites from washington dc i have a presentation with places i have visited myself and when they see them they say we want to go there too and uh, of course it's motivating and uh, something that they um, you know it's it's a you see things not just from a, a regular photo you see things that your teacher has you know literally touched and uh, uh, it's uh, it's something that um, um, they remember I mean for a whole uh, life for their whole life so um, then we went uh, to uh, our universities uh, we were separated in the four universities, uh, so uh, one in California, one in uh, Montana, in North Carolina, and uh, the fourth one in Nevada. Uh, so there was a colleague of mine, uh, Alena Posma Kurdoglo. We went uh, to what she's from Volkanesht, and she went to Nevada. We went together. Uh, so we had um, a nice adventure <laughs> together there. Uh, so, um, what was, um, um, you know, um, it's all about uh, an excitement and everything, but there were some difficulties as well. I mean, uh, the main difficulty was. Um, with having a lot to study uh, so the teacher should be prepared that you don't just come you know to go sightseeing and uh, you know um, because uh, well for me it wasn't a problem I am um, every, everybody from my home they say that I am a um, a student for my life uh, so I'm always studying I'm always reading something um, but there were teachers who were kind of reluctant to spend so much time in the classroom um, so we uh, sometimes we had classes from 8 in the morning until 8 in the evening um, and um, it was a lot of information to take in but all of the information was very useful so um, we we got things from Bloom's uh, like taxonomy it's just like we think yeah well, I know it why should I uh, learn it again but again it was um, a, a revisiting of things that we have known uh, adding some things that we don't know about it um, uh, well, an another thing was the assessment, you know, we know we have like three types of assessment, what more could I know about it? But again, everything was um, something that we already know based uh, um, as a basis, and then we learned a lot of new things on that. Um, we had um, <laughs> the ICT lessons, which were very interesting. We learned how to work with the Google Slides, Google Docs, Google Sites, everything that is uh, connected with this uh, uh, thing. We all had our uh, virtual portfolios uh, made there. And um, they weren't, you know, just like a, a short biography, some pictures and everything. It was, uh, uh, I mean, a living thing, uh, I would say, because uh, in the moment captured in that picture for the program, we were actually discussing um, the poems that we have written there. We had literature, um, how to incorporate literature in uh, uh, teaching English, and all of us have written poems where I am from. And uh, uh, we were to put that poem on our site. They are now a virtual portfolio. And um, we were discussing our masterpieces there. So uh, it was interesting. It was challenging from many perspectives, but uh, very rewarding in the end. Um, and we also I just, had. I, I just wanted to ask, sorry, I, wanted, I was just very curious. How did your um, life change after the program? Like, well, uh, first of all, it, uh, my um, um, language, I mean, the capacity of mastering the English language changed. 
Um, I just, um, um, in the first month when I came back, I realized I was making my shopping list in English in my head. And <laughs> uh, my students uh, in the first month, my students said, uh, can you speak a bit uh, uh, slower? Because I was, you know, accustomed to pe speaking to native speakers, to people who speak it, and um, it changed. And um, I was, uh, as a teacher of a, a foreign language of English, it was really a good experience for me because I, I um, became more, uh, you know, um, proficient in it. Um, and um, uh, another thing uh, that uh, uh, changed was uh, the perspective on teaching, you know, uh, because um, uh, let's face it, our uh, system is very theoretical. We do give our students a lot of theory. Yeah, we give them grammar, we give them a lot of things that, yes, it's useful, but be beyond that we need to teach them how to you know interact with the world how to be able to face the world this is what is very important for uh, them and this is what i um i was taught uh, there when i had my experience in of uh, teaching in school i had uh, my um, teacher partner and I saw how they, um, you know, uh, prepare their kids uh, um, from younger age to, you know, be able to do those things. When ours, uh, sometimes they have difficulties with that. Yes, they know the theory of uh, English, but they do not know how to use it sometimes. And um, as such, it, it changed. It changed a lot. Uh, it changed a lot my perspective on teaching English to younger students. Um, yeah, I, I, I want always... to ask you one more question. Uh, I'm sorry for interrupting you. Just so we will manage to answer all of the possible questions that there, there might be. It's also, Diana, um, I think might be a question for you as well. So uh, since the deadline for the application is March 31st, right? So uh, what is the most challenging part in the application process? Is it like a big one, big form that you need to sign? Uh, because I don't, I know that for some exchange programs, uh, some of the for forms to uh, complete everything takes several days sometimes. So what about here? What about this program? What about Fulbright T program? Um, well, specifically um, about the application form. Yes, it's a long application form. I wouldn't say it's a short one where you have to fill on the, your name, surname, and uh, goals for the future. It's not like that, um, of course. Um, well, the most difficult part for me, I think it was uh, uh, the one where you have to describe day by day of your whole school week. Uh, where you have to write not only the classes that you have, because it's easy to just mention I have this and that, but you had to um, uh, mention all the activities that you have in between classes, during breaks, after breaks, uh, after classes, what are all the activities that uh, in, are involved in the process uh, of teaching. So it, it was a lot, a lot of, uh, and uh, I, I think I it, it took about two days for me to complete the whole process of yeah. application. And yeah, it's, it's good not, that it's you not, can save it and yeah. then come back. And um, it's not something that you would typically complete in one seating and nobody expects you to, yes. obviously, um, because there's going to be some thinking you want to do, for example, like Elena mentioned on your school week, because not a lot of people realize what they're actually doing. Um, but I would say the most challenging thing is to actually start completing the application. Don't procrastinate. Don't put it off. To, for tomorrow next week because then next week it's going to be march 31st and it's going to be a little too late okay so the first step is actually doing it yes the application is lengthy uh, but let's be honest nothing worth doing is ever easy so <laughs> you have to start somewhere start on your application and again step number two is submit the application because we do get a lot of them but they're always incomplete in progress because people just Put it off for tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. So yeah, you have to submit the application for us to actually be able to consider it. That's, yes, that's, um, thank you for like that this. information. Yes, Elena, please add anything. Um, 
and um, I think uh, it's it's very important to think about your statement uh, of uh, uh, you know when you say your motivational kind of uh, uh, letter uh, to be accepted for the program where you have to be you know true to yourself you know because uh, um, it's uh, it's something that matters because the program really touches upon the things that you need and you have to be uh you know very honest about uh, those needs that you have and um as well uh, about the plans that you have for future um if you have um you know ideas on how you will be able to uh improve uh, the teaching in your school your personal experience as a teacher it is very important so um it's it's not about you know just like yes i want to visit america because it's a very interesting country it's not like that yeah so yeah uh, you need to show what you will do with this experience as i understand absolutely. right absolutely yeah exactly uh, wanna, exactly i also have a question if there is an answer in this question how many participants will actually get the the chance to to uh, go to united states is there a number yes. um we were we were about 80 people Mm. So yeah, about okay. 20 participants per university. Yeah. Okay. So in, in the States, you're going to meet a lot of teachers from all over the world. But from Moldova, we typically select two people a year. That is the allocated slots that we have. One person leaves in spring and another um, leaves in fall. So one, one of these. Yeah. Yes, so, so big uh, challenge, and, big uh, challenge. Yeah. In, uh, in most of the, it's it's very interesting that the majority of the teachers who apply are usually teachers of English, uh, and only a small part are teachers of some other subjects. For example, Appalachian State University is the only university that allows teachers of science um, to be, to be participants of this program. That's why. In our cohort, um, well, uh, 10 of us were teachers of English and nine were teachers of science. And we had separate classes. Uh, they had their own classes in one building and we had our English classes in some other building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I hope that um, if you have questions, please leave them in the comments because we're very excited to answer them. Um, but if you don't have yeah, any questions... Feel free to do so. Uh, if you haven't managed to do this during our Facebook Live, uh, don't worry. You just leave it there and uh, uh, we will get back to you in a written form. Uh, yeah. But most of the information is on the U.S. Embassy page. So you just go there, you click on the exchange programs, and you will find all of the information, all of the necessary information there. I think we will add also those links to our, in our comment section a little bit later after we will finish this Facebook Live. So, okay, uh, we are almost done uh, for today. Um, uh, we talked about the application process. We talked yep. about how it changes uh, teachers' life, participants' life. But also I wanted to know- uh, oh, Sorry, sorry. Yeah, somebody, yeah. somebody asked a question. Is there any age limit in order to be eligible for the program? Uh, no, there is no age limit. The sky is no, the limit. <laughs> we, no we limit. We had teachers of 50, 50 and something, and the and younger of 20 and something. It's... Yeah. The important thing is yeah. to have the experience required. That's it. And so and uh, fully uh, finish the application form. Otherwise, yes. it will be challenging. Yeah. That is very just don't leave it like your students until the last day. <laughs> yes, <that's laughs> don't procrastinate, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> as Diana said, as uh, uh, Yelena also mentioned, uh, it's it's kind of a long process. So um, our uh, recommendation will be to maybe start today, and yeah. so otherwise you will need would need to rush. Uh, and doing the last today, day. you know, make the first step. So. Yeah, exactly. And uh, once again, the uh, deadline for the application is March 31st. Uh, you have enough time, but be a bit quick. Uh, and uh, I think he, they really need to pay attention to uh, what are you asking there? Because sometimes we also have this problem of not oversharing, but giving the information that was not asked. <laughs> so keep it, keep it relevant. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Diana and Elena, maybe there's 
uh, final words of encouragement, final tips for those who are watching our Facebook Live. I see that people are watching, people are uh, reacting, uh, so which is very nice. So anything that you want to add? I just want to oh. say that please apply. Do not think twice about it. I know that a, especially teachers, we're so self-critical of ourselves. And sometimes we don't even... There's no reason for that, okay? So please apply. Try it out. Just like Elena said, you never actually know, okay? Because if everybody thought like that, we would have zero applicants, okay? So please apply. That's my advice. Um, yeah, and I would add, don't be afraid of the TOEFL test. Uh, yeah. It's manageable for teachers of English, <laughs> especially. <laughs> and yes. I mean, for teachers of other subjects, it's manageable too. So, and yeah. they do not require, you know, the C2 level. Yes, yes. Yeah. So and you... if you need a TOEFL books, by the way, you can go, uh, Yelena, you're from Belts, right? Yes. So we have America House in Belts. Yes. So you go there, yes. you check our library there, <laughs> and we have TOEFL books there. And here in America House, Kishno as well. So feel free to uh, come over, grab some books, uh, and uh, just prepare. Prepare yes. yourself for uh, uh, a nice experience i wanted to say adventure but it's even more than this this is a life-changing experience so i hope that as many people as possible will apply and we'll see and maybe if not this time maybe next time it's, it happens every year right yes absolutely we have the call for applications uh every single year it's a um, pity i can't participate again <laughs> <laughs> i would i would <laughs> we wish you could <laughs> sorry <laughs> We need to give chances for everyone, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I I think we will end up here. Uh, again, once again, we were talking about how to apply for the Fulbright Tea Exchange Program. We will leave all of the uh, uh, useful links in the comment section below. Uh, if you just connected to our Facebook Live, you have still have chances to ask your questions but if not don't worry just leave them in the comment section below and we will get back to them as soon as possible okay diana thank you very much yelena thank you as well for your time uh it was it was a pleasure it's super informative i think for for me and for our the audience pleasure well. is all ours i guess so thank you for having us thank you and goodbye, goodbye. To everyone. thank you for the invitation bye bye everybody bye bye, bye.